before we get to the WWE, can we do a little TNA rapid fire? I'll mention your name. You can just tell me the first thing that comes to your head, a story, a word, anything you want. Sure, man, we can do that. My mind don't work very fast anymore, but <laughs> we'll give it a shot. Great. Uh, AJ Styles. AJ is uh, – I'm more of the old school, and I am – I think there's a place for the the high flyers, and, you know, like in TNA, it was the X division. I think there's a place for that. There's very few that I believe in that um, don't have the giant size – and um you know to be at the head the top of the top of the car top of the game and um aj just broke all of that for me i think aj is probably one of the top talents in all of wrestling um he was for us in tna um he could handle any situation and he's proven that over in the on, even on the wwe side he broke through that um that ceiling that you know maybe would have kept our guys down um, but AJ broke through it and became the top guy over there too. So um, I just think uh, he he's exactly what it is. It's phenomenal. Um, you know, he's, he's just that he's, that he's that good and he can handle any level on that card. Um, he can hit a home run with. So I'd buy him as a, a, a world heavyweight champion. Ron Killings. Ron Killings. Oh, um, funny guy, man. Uh, had some good times with Ron. We actually left TNA and arrived in WWE together. Um, so I had some some road times with him. But, yeah, he's he's very entertaining guy. Loved the matches I got to uh, have with him in TNA. Um, had some fun times. Um, we didn't always run in the same circles, but always got along. Um, and he's he's another guy that um, he's obviously doing something right. He's been there since since I was there, and that's been 15 years. So. Um, he's been in the WWE on his second run for 15 years. So, um, and, and every time that camera light comes on, he's, he, he, he'll draw you in with whatever he's doing. He's just, he's that entertaining and he's, th he's that much of a, of just a great wrestler as well. So, um, I'm glad he's still there because I feel like, I mean, the guy doesn't age, he doesn't look 15 years older, um, and he can still do it in the ring. So I, I mean, I'm sure he's happy. He's been there for so long and he's probably made, you know, some, some really good money. I know that's what he wanted to do, but um, I'd love for them to do something with him, but um, yeah, great, great talent. I'll be rude. They missed the boat on that guy. Um, him and AJ, I, I consider uh, two of the best talents that TNA produced. Uh, Bobby was great. Um, he deserved every spot that he got in there. He was another guy that I felt like we were coming up around the same time and kind of being pushed down with the the the, the uh, more established stars. Um, so when he went to WWE, I I thought he would kind of have the same same trajectory as AJ Styles. He'd get in there and he, that man would be a world champion someday. And and they kind of they did some you know uh, start and stops with him. Um, he had real successful. Uh, uh, I know he real successful in, t in uh, NXT, uh, successful in the tag team ranks, but I think they really missed the boat on him because, you know, he's, he's getting older. Um, you know, he's out with injury right now and, um, you know, he's had some real serious surgeries. So I'm not sure what um, he's going to be able to do um, if, and when he comes back. So um, I really wish they, they would have done something with Bobby um, if he's able to still go hundred percent, I hope they do something with him because that that that's one of the the hidden misses uh, for WWE. Bully Ray and Bully, when they first came in, you know, you never know. I, I guess I have to put them in the same category as as guys like Sting and Kurt and Christian. Um, they came over and uh, they they I felt like their heart was in TNA um, and their first order of business. Storm and I had just turned heel. They came in and did everything they could to establish some heat on us. I mean, the fans were already pissed off because they loved us for so long. And, um, you know, we turned and aligned ourselves with Jeff Jarrett. But then to have a beloved team such as 3D and, the, and coming in with um, their decorated past and and uh, how just how great they were, they came in and just 
took Storm and I to another notch. So I, I'll never forget that they had done that for us. And, um, and yeah, it was just, uh, they had a fun run. I, I learned a lot from those guys, actually, you know, even, even being around TNA and being on TV and pay-per-views, you know, you, you almost think, okay, I'm learning how this business is run. You work with uh, team 3d as they were known there you work with them and I'm, I'm still learning. I mean, I learned a lot from them about tag team wrestling. So um, I really enjoyed it. And, Bully is just, um, he's one of those that, you know, he, I know he had a great singles run in TNA, but um, he just knows the business. He, um, he's got a great mind for the business. He knows what works. He knows what doesn't. He's old school. Um, I, even to this day, I enjoy talking with him and picking his brain. And, you know, a lot of us get to hear him on the busted open, uh, uh, their, their, uh, po their podcast show. So, um, yeah, I, I really, I really like Bully Ray. I know he, he can, he can be that bully to a lot of the guys. I mean, you, you know, I, I was very fortunate to be able to work with him early on. So um, I'd like to think Storm and I earned his respect. So, um, but yeah, I, I, I really enjoy Bully Ray. Jeff Jarrett. Nobody will know how much that guy could carry on his shoulders. Um, he carried a company. Um, he did everything for that company. Um, but I believed in him and, and even in more recent years, you know, I, I, I was one of the young guys. I didn't see everything that he did behind the scenes. And since he's had his podcast and I, I mean, I still talk to the guy, I still have a great relationship with him, but since I've heard his podcast, when they really dig deep into the insides of what made TNA work, it's, it's a whole new learning process. I was there for all of this, but yet, I'm learning so much that was going on that I didn't even know about. And I just, I, the guy is so intelligent when it comes to not, not just wrestling world, but uh, running a business, knowing, knowing what the ins and outs are. And I would, I mean, you almost have to say nowadays after learning with T, TNA and maybe his, uh, the global force, um, he's, not only knows what to do, but he knows what not to do. I mean, I don't know if he ever has an interest in uh, tackling that again, uh, but uh, the guy just has the, the one of the greatest minds in our business, and I have a lot of respect for them. He helped me out so much professionally, um, and in more recent years, he's helped me out tremendously in uh, my personal life, too. So um, I consider Jeff a, a really good friend, and um, I have a lot of – I have – one of the most respected guys um, uh, that I look at in this business. Were you there when Hogan was there? No, I was gone, um, but I was still in the area. And so I was still coming, um, even because I hated being at WWE so long. Um, I was still kind of attached with some of the guys. So I was around when he was there. Um, and then when they brought me back for um, just a, a you know, very short time um, he was there. So, but no, I can't really say much about it. I, I didn't get to work with him hands on. Um, but I mean, I think Hogan and Bischoff, I think they knew who I was, but um, they never looked at the, I think that was what happened when, with that short little run I had. Uh, I, when I was teaming with Matt Hardy and uh, we were going against Beer Money. Um, Bischoff and Hogan, they, they never looked at the history of TNA. They could care less. So even though they may have known who I was, they were more focused on beer money at this point than America's most wanted. They, they, I don't think they had any idea of the history we did because they, even when we were trying to tell that story with uh, beer money and myself, um, there was no uh, packages done. There was nothing, you know, just a lot of things that really could have pointed some more interest in those matches. It was just kind of thrown together. And I think the commentary team were saying, Oh, the former partner of storm, but there was just no real thought put into that. I think I think Vince really helped us out with trying to get that done, but they just never got on board. So um, I think a lot of, um, like I said, I can't. I was not hands on with them. Um, so it's me just giving my opinion here. But I think um, that was a lot of the downfall for for TNA. Um, they just were not doing things to make the company successful. <laughs> 